that's far superior to me striking, but I still feel like I need to work more on it. Right, right, right. It's, I um, I was telling my girlfriend this morning that if we're talking about jujitsu from the aspect of you can't punch, I go, my jujitsu is terrible. Now, when I use jujitsu in fighting, I know how to fight. Like if someone tackles me, I put them in my guard. In a self-defense situation, I'm gonna pin their hands and tiger claw them across the face. And then I'll sweep them, but you know, without this tiger clawing part, <laughs> my straight sport grappling is horrible. I know how to fight, so I know how to use jujitsu in a fight. But if I had to go out there and yeah. compete, it would be a chokathon. <laughs> it wouldn't be that bad. But uh, I was lucky. I had a cousin who was basically a purple belt under House and Caesar. Um, yeah. So I've had a chance to roll with him a lot, and it was humbling every single time. But what it did was it developed my defense. So sometimes you don't have to get the person right away. You just have to let them tire themselves out trying to get you. And then you can maybe attack them a little. But my worst thing by far is my sports grappling. I have no no delusion about that, you know. But I'm, I'm going to bring a jiu-jitsu instructor into the school once that's option or once that's an option. So yeah. my sport grappling is terrible. Um, what's your favorite punch? Probably the hammer fist now. It's, it's effective. It's, I love it's hammer effective fist. From, it's yeah. effective from every position. It's, yes. Yes. It's, yes. And I think it's underrated. You know, I, I like the back fist. And people yeah. say, why do you do that? I go, because you can hit someone on the tip of the nose, the butt of the jaw, the rib cage, the inside of the thigh. It hurts everywhere, you know? <laughs> so yeah. I love the back fist and... Um, I'm, I'm right-handed, but I box like a southpaw because I like to hit the liver. I've always yeah. been a body, I've always favored body punching, and I teach it to my students because this is not a good club overall. You know, people are headhunters, but if you hit the body, as you know, it'll take the life out of you, you know? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's horrible. It, it, saved, it saved me a few years ago now, but uh, I actually got involved in a white collar boxing charity thing for the local football club mm -hmm. and uh, they, they warned me before I went in no kicking no throwing <laughs> it's, it's just boxing right so uh, I think that was so much in my head and I was, I was about 32 31 32 at the time and wasn't in the best of shape right and I uh, had a fight an 18 year old guy <laughs> who, quite but uh, it was three five minute rounds and near the end of the third round I was gassed out I was <laughs> just and uh he was starting to get the better right and one lever punch and it was the last two minutes of the fight oh. he couldn't breathe oh he couldn't breathe and all i had to do was stay out of his distance and i was safe but <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a very close call but it was but uh, there, there's a lot to be said for body shots at times but oh yeah with your opponent oh yeah it'll it'll change your life i um I used to watch boxing on the Spanish channel because, you know, Latino fighters are notorious body punchers, you know, so I used to like to watch Julio Cesar Chavez or uh, Roberto Duran or these other legendary body punchers, and I would see that after they fought people, people weren't the same anymore, like, it took their heart away, and I didn't understand that until I fought a really good body punch, and I'm like, hmm, I don't want to do this anymore, <laughs> I mean, like, in my mind, I was in the fight thinking, well, in the match, I'm thinking, I really don't like this. You know? <laughs> this is hurting way more than it's supposed to. Like, I'm supposed to be throwing punches. You're supposed to be taking them. Mm -mm. He was landing body shots, and every single one, just it's like watching your energy bar go down in a video game, right? You just saw it just going, mm, 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 mm. By the end of the match, I was like, this is, this is horrible. This is a young man's game. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore, so... It uh, gave my daughter the biggest confidence boost there about a year ago. There's one of our instructors now, he's, he's been in our city. And uh -huh. he's, I'd say he's about 6'2", he's quite a big guy. He was teaching a seminar and had my daughter out and doing a wee bit of sparring. And uh, obviously she wasn't going to do much damage. Or, but uh, during, between the rounds she came out and I said, had his liver. Ooh. And uh, he got it tight and I mean... She really took the wonder of him, and he could barely go on after, like. Yeah. Uh, it does. Afterwards, the 
two or three instructors come up to me afterwards and said, uh, how did you know that was only a weak spot I had? <laughs> nice. Said, he told me that when we were 16. Right. So I went back 20 years and I said, if someone tells you their weakness, you don't forget it. <laughs> nope, you just go for it. You, that's that's but, uh, the Achilles heel of every, I mean, everybody's got one, right? Uh, so, ugh. But, uh, <sighs> she, she still doesn't know that's, that's, that was the only weakness. I never told her that. I just told her to go for the shot. But she got a great confidence boost from taking one of the instructors down. But Hey, I tell my students it's not the size of the bullet that kills you. You know, it's the energy and the focus. So yeah. we work a lot on body punching. And we work on throwing in combinations, which a lot of karate studies aren't taught traditionally. It's like, you know... In the old days, they got to throw one punch because they were fighting armored samurai, so they had to throw that one Hail Mary punch, but, you know, here, volume punching, volume, 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 so we never throw less than three punches at a time, and I have them doing a lot of drills that were developed through boxing, bobbing and weaving, you know, just things that are yeah. essential. I mean, the reality of self-defense has changed. We have, you know, closed-toed shoes on concrete. You know, we can grip better, we can turn, all these kind of things. And people act like in the traditional martial arts world sometimes that if you teach updated fighting methods that you're betraying the art, you know, or that you're betraying the yeah. legacy. And I tell people the legacy lives in the kata, the form, the philosophy. That's, that's timeless. But how you yeah. fight, how you defend yourself, that should be evolving all the time or you're actually doing your service that you know your students a disservice so it's uh it's a lot of fun i got two of my little killing machines in with me right now my daughter and niece that's right my girlfriend we're all sitting in this little room because it's well it's freezing cold to us in california it's like 50 degrees you you're probably like ha 50 well <laughs> it gets that's a heat wave here <laughs> right it gets <laughs> cold in Ireland. I've, I've never been to Ireland, but I remember when I was in Italy, there was this one radio station that played opera, but then for some reason at 11 o'clock, it turned to Gaelic. And I'm thinking, yeah. what is this language? They're like, this is Gaelic. I'm like, why? We're in Italy. But, you know, they're like, it was an Irish station. So I remember listening yeah. to Gaelic going, I'm going to listen for one word. There's one part of this I'm going to be able to understand. There wasn't. <laughs> I, thought, well, I don't understand it either, so it's right. <laughs> But they still teach it as a, as a first language in some, like out in kind of the rural provinces, right? It's, it's some very small areas they do, yeah. And the math, there's a local school here that actually teaches it as a first language. Mm -hmm. and, uh, my three daughters go to that school, so they all speak fluently. Nice. Yet me and my wife don't, so. <laughs> but at the time when we sent them there, we didn't really think about it, but at the time they're teenagers. They're able to have discussions in the house without us knowing what they're talking about. We've <laughs> literally given them the, the upper hand here, but <laughs> that's right. It's but, it's uh, it's funny because in Massachusetts, in Boston, there's huge Irish communities where they still speak Gaelic like as their first language, I think. So, in yeah. some places, it's probably a lot like rural Ireland. It's like, okay, everybody here speaks Gaelic first and then English, and you know. From a Catholic stuff and all that, so it's it's interesting to think that a place away from the mother land still has yeah. such fluency in a language that you know their generations removed from. So See, it's unbelievable. Ireland's one of the few places now that the culture is actually more popular outside of it than it is in it. Right, right. Even <laughs> right. That, um, well, we know as Bader Act, which is the Irish stick fighting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And it's really, really rare to find it in Ireland. Yet it's all over the states, all over right. Canada. There's clubs in Germany. It's it's massive around the world outside of Ireland, but <laughs> not so much in it's, Ireland. It's it's so unusual. The Irish language is more spoken outside of Ireland than it is in Ireland as well. Right. That's okay. crazy. But it happens that way sometimes. Like um, like um, there is an art, an Indian art called Kalaripayatu. And they practice it in India, but it's losing popularity, like Taekwondo and Karate, but in other places where they have significant Indian populations, it's still thriving, which is the funniest kind of thing. Like, why here and not there? But, you know, that's what keeps the world interesting, right? Yeah, that's it. Very there's, cool. there's a great uh, resurgence now of um, 
because the world commerce starts too. I've noticed it's especially uh, European arts and African arts mm-hmm. which come to a great sort of they're, they're rising up again kind of thing and uh, I've came across a few recently now. Kalima would be one, would be a Scandinavian martial art. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting now. It's very similar to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but with a different rule set. It's kind of a wrestling based. Right, right. But uh, it'd be great to see what the future holds for these and are they going to play their way in the MMA or. I think they should because people are so unprepared for that interpretation of grappling or that style of it. Um, like catch wrestling from Europe, you know, that's. That's some rough and tumble stuff, and it's like, it's not this smooth transitional stuff. It's like somehow they've got their elbow in your ear or their knee on your face. Like, it hurts all the time wherever you go. You know, it's not this fluid, flowing kind of thing. It's like beat them up regardless of what position you're in and, you know, make it so uncomfortable for them that they just move into your next submission hold or your next pin or whatever the case may be. As you know, Europe's got a great history of grappling arts, especially in... um, Oh, uh, like in the Russian, former Russian republics, those guys are yeah. animals, you know. They wrestle bears, I mean, <laughs> there should be something against that. It's, they wrestle bears, Khabib, so. Khabib has proved it. So. Khabib did it. Um, there's that uh, Kamsat, that Chechenian guy, he's wrestled yep. a few bears as a kid. It's like, do they have child protective services? I mean, <laughs> why, why are you rolling around with the bear, dude? I don't care if it's a little bear. It's a bear, you know, those teeth aren't for yeah. show, so, you know, <laughs> it's, we'll see how it turns out, but I don't want to take up all your time, I know it's, is it 8.42 there, or? Uh, 7.42, Seven, okay, so we're, okay, so we're eight hours ahead, or behind you, it's only, a, you know, it's not even quite noon here yet, it's lunchtime, so, <laughs> but I, I really appreciate you, um, you know, uh, reaching back, because, this is the kind of stuff that I think martial artists need to do more of. Yeah. So I definitely appreciate you taking the time. Uh, whenever you want to do this, this time works great for me usually, or I'm an early bird, so you know we could do that sometimes if you want, but I'd really like to continue uh, just discussing different martial arts topics, you know, and if you want to bring somebody yeah. by, you know, that'd be, that'd be great, so. Uh, well, thanks for having me, Anthony, and a pleasure being on that's right man you uh take care of yourself stay warm stay Sit safe yourself. take care of your family i'll um see you later man take it easy send yourself good luck <laughs> bye okay. all right folks that was the end of my my uh quick chat with sensei doyle um hope you learned as much as i did we'll be speaking more as you heard until then I ch- you guys take care of yourselves. Uh, check me out at martialartsoakland.com. I am on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter under Thomas Martial Arts. But by far the most important thing is always, please be kind to yourselves and each other.